Hey guys, this is Chris here. Just giving you guys another update real quick on, on my birds, on, on the canaries, golden finches. I also, towards the end, want to give you guys a few tips as far as uh, spring and kind of cooler weathers, but it's warm some days. Uh, where, where I'm at currently, uh, the, the weather fluctuates drastically. Uh, also some things that you can do to, to get your birds ready uh, into breeding condition. And so, I uh, just want to follow up real quick here. So we have one of my uh, Lipochrome uh, Red Mosaic Factor uh, canaries here. Um, so I did put a new male in there. So she she was with a, another male. He's actually there bathing. Um, let's pull this in here. We'll let you guys watch him bathe for a sec. Oh, now he's going to jump out. Um... So she did lay two clutches with him, uh, but the eggs weren't fertile. And so I don't think that male was quite ready uh, for breeding yet. So this male, he's been singing like crazy. I put him in last week. So um, I think when I did the last videos is the day that I had put him in there with her. So she hasn't laid anything yet. I'm going to rip up some paper and put in there for her. She has been tugging at the newspaper to, to build a nest. So... Uh, they have a little bit of egg food in there that, that they really enjoy. So hopefully we'll get something from them. Um, uh, mostly because they're my only uh, Lipochrome canary pair that I'm breeding at this moment. So i um, hoping to get some success from them. Down here we have a, one of our Red Factor canary, uh, sorry, Red Mosaic pairs down here. Uh, so she was on, on the last video she was sitting on four eggs. One of the four eggs was fertile. That one egg didn't end up hatching. And so I, I ended up pulling the eggs in the nest and she is in the process of building a new nest. So I'm hoping that this next round will get more fertile eggs and, and we'll be able to hatch them out. So that's where we're at with these guys. Um, and then over here we have our red factor pair. So I still have, so I have, I have two clutches of, of, babies in here um the first clutch the are these two right here on the perches um it was one of them and sorry they're jumping around so these two the, they're closest to us the other one that just flew off and the one that just dropped down and then the second clutch of babies are these here and you can actually see that their feathers on their breast um uh, is getting plucked so that's from the the mom she's actually starting to build a nest for her third clutch and so it is to the point where i can pull out that first clutch of babies the first two i'm going to pull them out today put them in the aviary let them fly around my the second clutch of babies those two right there that uh, have some missing feathers they're still getting fed by the parents so i i need to leave them in there they're doing a good job feeding them um I just didn't provide nesting material soon enough and they started plucking the babies to line their nest with feathers. And so uh, that, that's where that issue happened. So we'll get the other two babies. I'm gonna band them today, put them out into the aviary, the, the oldest two, let them get some sunlight and, and get going. And probably another week, these other babies will be weaned. Their feathers will grow back. I'm not worried about it. The parents aren't being aggressive towards them at all. Um, just the hen plucked their feathers to build her nest and so and that's because I didn't get the nesting material in there to her soon enough and so that's something that definitely could have been avoided uh, just didn't happen this round so you can see the male he's a really pretty orange factor the the female she is an orange factor but she molted and I did not feed her uh, any food coloring at all so she molted into yellow feathers and you can see the babies as well are yellow or an orange tinge I have not fed any red factor coloring agents to these babies and so you can kind of see how they look um, I do give them carrots or the dried egg food um, that does have coloring agents in it so that's probably why you can see the babies some of the babies kind of have that light orange tinge to them um, they could definitely be a darker orange like this male here, here if I really fed him the colors. And I have it, I just, I haven't put forth the time this year to, to really 
specifically get their colors in and so it's not too late um, these babies will molt into their adult feathers here in about a month or two um, so I can feed it to them then and be able to get that orange color in so I'm not too worried about it right now so and then we'll just jump here real quick to the last golden pair that I had so I did end up getting putting the female out into the aviary or the big flight cage and so I have the, the male in with the three babies. As you can see, the babies are starting to eat on their own. Um, I still have the male in there just for safe keepings. I'm gonna give them about one more week just to be safe. And then we're gonna transfer all of them out to the big aviary and put some bands on them. So um, I haven't seen any of the babies sing yet. Typically, they're starting to sing around now. I haven't seen any yet. so. Uh, we'll see what happens. You can see uh, that's the female still feeding the baby. So they're still really good parents. Um, I just didn't provide the nesting material necessary for them to build their nest. So she pulled the baby's feathers out. So, um, but yeah, as you can see that male, he's so he one of my prettiest males that I have. He is split to blueback. Uh, he, this is his third breeding season for me, and he's been one of my best and most prolific males. So this year they did give me three clutches of babies and, and I got nine babies out of them this year. So and nine or three chicks each clutch. So they've done really well for me. Um, the rest of my Goldians are, are out here in the, in the aviary and flight case. So we'll, we'll let you guys take a little peek here and, and kind of talk a little bit about, um, if you, real quick, you see that that's one of that males. That was the first baby from the first clutch, he has already molted out. He molted out incredibly fast. You can see right behind him on the blue lid is his sibling that hasn't even really started molting out at all. So um, he's singing up a storm. Think he's he thinks he's all that. There's one of my other males. Um, he's getting ready to molt because he's done breeding. So he's there relaxing. So just show you guys real quick out here. Get the fun birds out, getting them ready. They're they're enjoying the sun. Um, it is springtime here, and so one thing I did want to talk a little bit about is is the different weather and transitioning from winter to spring to summer. You know, one thing to really be careful of is, you know, especially here where I'm at in, in Utah, that like a, a, a good example. Yesterday it was snowing at 10 o'clock in the morning, and today it's about 60 degrees, and so it really each day is completely different. So it's very, very important that you still provide a heat source and a shelter that the birds can get away and out of the elements. And so I still have inside of my shed, my heaters are on. So my the inside of my shed is heated to about 60 to 65 degrees currently. And so um, with that, you know, if, if it's cold and stormy out here, because as you can see, I did take the plastic off my aviary. If it's cold, the birds know that they can come inside to get out of the elements, and most of them do. The only ones that don't are my red-rumped parakeets. So you can see my one male there, and then the female, she's up there. So I have three pairs of those. One pair is in here, and then the other two pair are in uh, the other flight. They will sit outside, whether it's raining, snowing, sunny, whether it's negative one degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. They very rarely will come into the shed the only time they come in here is to eat and that's only at that window right there so um they have proven to be very hardy birds for me um like i said this winter we we got down to negative degrees of weather and they would sit out in the very farthest point of the aviary and were just fine they never had any issues you know they always had the option to come in and get warm but they never did so all my other birds, they would come inside and sleep for the night where it was warm. Um, but so that's just something to, to be aware of and, and keep an eye out for, for this. You know, the, probably the next month or so, uh, depending on where you're living, is um, making sure that they have that heat source, making sure that they're out of the wind or out of the rain or snow. Um, if that's what's happening in your areas right now, sometimes we... We get excited when we have a day that's 60 degrees and we put them out there and, and then it becomes nighttime and the next day is really cold and, and stormy and, and the birds end up dying. 
So it's really important to, to be aware of that and keep that in mind. So if you guys, you know, have any other questions for me, please feel free to ask me, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to try and make a video on them for you and, uh, you know, try and help you out the best I can and, and make these videos as informative and educational as possible. You can see my male canary there. He's, he's singing, he's <clears throat> loving the sun out there. And I've, I've started to, to give him a little bit more egg food, uh, with the, the, the days getting warmer and a lot of them are starting to want to breed. I will be putting nest boxes out for my red rump parakeets, uh, this next week or two to they're, they're starting to, to breed and, and are kind of chasing each other around and establishing their dominance and their territory. And so, um, it'll be exciting to, to see if we can get some babies out of them this summer. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, keep me posted, leave me a comment, like the video, share it. Appreciate you guys and appreciate your support. Hope everyone has a, a great time. Thanks.